welcome to the LIBD RStats Club. Today, we're going to learn about exploring expression data with the IC package, uh, which stands for Interactive Summarized Experiment Explorer Package. And so, um, <clears throat> if you don't have IC installed, um, you can just copy and paste these lines of code here to install a biasing manager and then install the IC package itself. Uh, as always, you can find the link to that Google Doc from the spreadsheet that has all the all the sessions for the club here. Um, all right. And so <clears throat> let's, um, while, while IC installs, and before we actually play around with some data, let's, we'll get a, um, let's explore it a little bit what it does. So um, I put the link to the Bioconductor landing page for IC. Um, so IC is this uh, Bioconductor package that actually won um, um, one of the categories of the first R Studio Shiny contest. Um, and so Shiny is this R package by R Studio um, that provides um, graphical interfaces powered by R and other languages. But basically, the idea is that you're running R behind the scenes such that if the user changes some input, they can. Um, uh, R will compute some new information and will provide it to the user. This is a fairly complicated um, Shiny application. Like if you look at the code behind IC, it looks quite complicated. There's a lot of different pieces and stuff. Uh, but as a user though, they've, the, the code behind it is quite complicated, but they try to make it uh, easy for the user um, to actually utilize this package. And I wanted to mention it because um, um, this week, actually, um, we posted a preprint uh, led by Matt Tran uh, and um, Kristen Maynard, uh, where we actually use this IC uh, package um, and it's part of the publication. So <clears throat> IC has a couple of different vignettes, has five of them. So I'm just going to go to the user's guide first, just to um, get a little bit familiarized. Oh, I opened the wrong link, sorry. I opened the R script link instead of an HTML link. Um, all right, so <clears throat> they even have this nice little sticker here, I see. Um, and so how do you actually use it? The, this package can be as simple as loading the package, I see, and then running the I see function, um, to a summarized experiment object named SE. Um, that is like as simple as it can be. Um, um, uh, and actually like um, um, summarized experiment, right? We've seen before that this is one of the main bioconductor packages for sharing like um, expression data. Uh, it actually can be used for other types of high um, um, data. Um, um, but like, there's a lot of other packages that expand summarized experiments. So one of them is the single cell experiment that um, that adds a couple layers on top of summarized experiment. But it actually is a summarized experiment in itself. So that's why you can use IC for that type of data and other types of data too. Um, um, and so, uh, um, how will it look? Once you actually run um, IC, you can, you can save the object of, um, of IC into, let's say, uh, let's call it here app. And so you can then run that app using the shiny uh, run app command. Um, and how it will look, it will look something like this. It's gonna have a little browser tab that has um, several panels. Um, for example, here it has a, a reduce dimension plot panel, a row data panel, um, and then some like distribution plots um, for different things. It can even have like a heat map at the end. Um, and so all these panels will actually be configurable by the user um, once they're actually looking at the data, um, but then also by the person providing the shiny app. 
Um, so <clears throat> we'll, we'll explore IC mostly as a user first to get an idea of what you can actually do with this package. Because I think this package could be really powerful uh, for everyone at Libre, because we have a lot of summarized experiment. Um, we have a lot of data uh, that we provide to everyone as a summarized experiment object. And so let's say you just want to see, you know, how you, you want to plot the expression of a given gene, for example. Um, maybe instead of writing our code to do it, you could just use this um, IC package. Um, um, and so, to have a common example to work with, uh, we're going to use the speakeasy example data, um, which I'm opening here in a new tab. Um, this is the data that we used this week for the differential expression bootcamp. And so um, I, some of you are, are new, um, and some of you uh, were during the bootcamp uh, with us. So I'm just going to go here to download data on the top. And there's a couple things you could do, but like I'm going to use this download statics file um, code over here um, to download um, the data that we're going to work with. So let me copy that. I'm going to go to our studio. Um, oh, let me let me see that. Uh, See that script. I'll paste that code over here. Um, so this is going to download the data from that example. Um, um, and then it's going to open on our studio project. Um, so um, once you have downloaded the data, you can start a little new R script. Um, and so I'm going to load the IC package. I'm also going to load um, summarize experiment. So we're going to load some summarized experiment data. And I want to locate that data using the here package. Um, so, um, let me find the data that I want to load. So I'll use load command for here. Um, it's under DE analysis, are the A's. Um, sorry, is it there? Mm, no, actually, it's not there. Never mind. Uh, the data that I want to load in is actually on the full path. It's called RC Speakeasy. Our data. So I, I didn't necessarily need the here package, but that's useful in case I save my script somewhere else. So let me save my script. Uh, I press Control S. I'm going to save it in a new directory. Just um, um, <laughs> new folder. I call it IC. And inside of IC, I'm going to call it like explore ic.r. Cool. So I'll copy paste this code into the chat uh, on the Zoom chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me execute all that code. So this is I'm loading the IC package to summarize experiment for the data here for locating the data. <clears throat> um, uh, it's taking a bit of time. And so I actually forgot that verbose equals true. Um, argument to the load function. Uh, and so I see here that we loaded an object called RCG. Let's explore that object. Um, uh, Just adding a couple of comments so we know. A little bit of what we're doing. 
And so this object over here um, is a range summarized experiment object that has 60,000 genes across 40 samples. We see that we have information there called counts. So let me let me actually uh, you know try out um, IC. And so we saw in the vignette that the way you can just run it is by using IC and then providing the summarized experiment object. There's actually a couple more arguments here. Um, and so um, I think one of them is called uh, title, if I remember correctly, um, app title. So I'll give it a title here. So it will be speak easy example. Just give me a title. Um, so let's run this. And so you'll notice that it's uh, it loaded the shiny package there. Um, um, and uh, just to see this a little bit nicer, I'm going to open it in the browser. So this is open it. This is opening the shiny app on my um, Google Chrome right now. Um, and it might take a little bit to load. That should be okay. Um, uh, so you see now uh, we can see a little bit of the structure. We have like multiple panels there. They're currently loading, so that's why we see those like uh, dots, pulsating dots in the center. Um, it's like loading the data that we'll see um, soon enough. Cool. So now I loaded the data. Um, and so there's quite a bit of information here. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, um, so we can see the information a little bit better. Um, so because I zoomed in, it's actually it's having to remake the plots. Um, and it's going to adjust them to the size of of my browser window. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, zoom, I zoomed in multiple times, so it's having to do it a couple of times. Um, so what do we have here on the left, right? The first thing we have here on the left is um, we have a table that is interactive that we can search through. And it has um, uh, information here that is, is called row data table one. And so what is the information that's showing here? This information for our genes that was stored in the row data element of, this, of our summarized experiment object. Um, so in particular here, this is data that was generated with Speakeasy. So we have a column here called length, which is the number of uh, coding base pairs for that gene. We have the gen code ID, the symbol ID, the gene type. This is based on information from gen code version 32. So like some of them are long non-coding RNA, some of them are protein coding genes, et cetera. We have the symbol for that gene. Um, and then we have the entree ID, which is this um, database from NCBI. Uh, not all the genes have entree IDs, some of them do. Um, a class column here that tells where the gene is in gen code, yes or no. And this is really more useful for when we work with X and X and junction data, not with genes. We have the mean expression across all those um, for that given gene, the number of transcripts, uh, and then even the gen code transcript uh, labels, um, sorry, IDs. Um, so that's, that's a lot of information there that we have for the gene. And we can notice here that like um, this first gene that we have 2223972.5 is the one that is shown on the feature assay plot. So what is this showing? This is showing the expression of that gene um, um, across all the 40 samples that we have. Like we can see here that most of our samples are zeros. 
two of them have a, a count of two and one of them has a count of three. Um, so that's a fairly lowly expressed gene. Um, um, and then um, this panel over here, the feature assay plot panel, has a couple of boxes in, below it. One of them is called data parameters and I will called visual parameters and a third one called selection parameters. And so this is where like, we're gonna start to configure our IC app um, to do it what we want. And so for example, I'm gonna click here on visual parameters. Um, and let's say I wanna color um, our samples by some information. And so right now it says, it says like, okay, we wanna color them, but why are we coloring them by? By default, we're not coloring them by anything. When I'm going to click here on feature, I'm mean, sorry, on column data. Column data now acts as the phenotype table that we have under the function called data for our summarized experiment object. And by default, we grab the first column, which was called sample ID. We have a ton of columns here, but at the end, there's actually some information that we provided ourselves. Um, and so this particular example data set has 40 samples across two brain regions across, across two diagnosis. So let's color the, the samples here, let's say by brain region. Um, and so now we see that like um, uh, we have two amygdala samples that are colored in red and one SAC sample colored in blue, uh, um, having some expression, but that's only the color. So let me say I want to also maybe use shapes. So I'll click here on shape and I want to shape them by column data, and I'm going to select uh, the primary diagnosis column. Um, and so now we have circles for bipolar and, um, and triangles for controls. So now we have our, you know, uh, we didn't actually need to code anything, um, but now we're able to explore the expression of a given gene. So those are the visual parameters. Let's say we're happy with that. Um, with what we have now. I'm gonna click here on the title visual parameters to hide that box. And let's, let, me, let me click now on let's say uh, data parameters. Um, um, <clears throat> and so, sorry, is that what I want? Uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I want a selection parameter, sorry. Um, uh, and so by default, he says here like receive column selection from and it says it has here three dashes that is like from nowhere. But you can click that and then you'll notice that the names that show up here are names of some of the other panels that we have in our IC app. So um, 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 one of them is column data table one and column data table one, um, um, maybe, maybe that's not what I wanted. I should wanted to link it to the row data table one. Um, uh, let me see if that's, oh, so, sorry, that was actually data parameters, not selection parameters. Um, so um, this second little box here has like, you can uh, get the Y axis from nowhere, or you can get it from data table row from data table one. Um, so that's what I'll select here. And now there's a little bit of information that gets printed at the bottom of both row data table one and feature assay plot one. On the row data table one, at the bottom it says here, transmitting the feature name to feature assay plot one. Feature assay plot one, which is the one here in the green, says it's receiving the feature name from row data table one. So what did this enable? Um, so now if I go back on the row data, I can click, let's say, I'm gonna, uh, uh, let me sort the genes here by mean expression. Um, um, so now we have, I found the mostly expressed gene over here. I'm gonna click on it, left click. And so that actually updated the, the, the gene that we wanted to visualize on the feature assay plot one. Um, and so, you know, let me click on another gene and that updates the plot. Um, so this makes it a lot easier to then um, 
navigate um, and update the plots and explore the data, right? Because now, um, instead of here having to go to the feature y-axis and choosing a specific gene myself, um, I can use information from this table, right? So maybe I can search for, let, let's search for MODP. Um, maybe I need to uh, write it in capitalized letters. Um, so now I found a gene by its symbol. I can left click on it. I didn't even now have to figure out what, what is the ensemble gene ID for that gene. Let me close uh, Slack. So it doesn't, uh, Uh, right. So that's how I was able to find the gene, right? A lot easier. Um, I was going to clear the search box so that we can see all the genes again, right? Um, and so this may be all what you need, right? Let's say you're only exploring the ex uh, expression of a given gene. That might be all, all the information you need. You might actually, I mean, but we have a lot more data on our study. And so there's a third panel here called column data plot. Column data here is going to plot information uh, that we have um, about uh, our uh, samples. And so let me click here, let's say, on um, data parameters. And maybe instead of saying, uh, instead of plotting the sample IDs, that's not as interesting. Let's plot, for example, the um, uh, total assigned gene column. Right, so this is information about, like, uh, um, um, what was the percent of reads or the proportion of reads that got assigned to genes. And so uh, we can see it's mostly around 0.3 in this particular example. Um, but we can add some uh, information. That is a y-axis. We could add actually an x-axis here. So let's add like, um, let's plot that against the um, uh, mitochondrial mapping rate. So now we have an X scatter plot where the Y axis is the total assigned gene, the X axis is the mitochondrial mapping rate. We can add some visual parameters. We can color them by column data. Let's color them by, let's be consistent. So I'm gonna color them by uh, brain region. And I'm gonna use a shape from the column data and the shape will be the primary diagnosis. Um, so now we have a much nicer looking scatter plot over here. Um, and this is something you could use to um, interactively explore like different covariates and how they're related. Um, um, so that is the column data plot. Um, uh, you can even change some of the selection parameters. Um, so that means like you can, you can make this a bit more complicated. Um, um, but I won't get into that. Let me hide some of these options. Um, right. um, so that those are the first three um, panels that we have from my C. There's a couple more. Um, so let's look at those further below. One of them here is called row data plot one. And so this is for plotting information that we have on our row data uh, table. So it's particularly useful if the person that provided you the summarized experiment object already pre-computed some numeric variables. So in this case, we do have one, which is called the mean expression. Um, so let's go to data parameters. And instead of plotting the length, let's, let's plot the mean expression of our genes. Um, this one takes longer to plot because we have 60,000 points to plot. Um, that is the number of genes that we have. And like I can see most of them are like, in this scale, it's not very useful because the y-axis, um, uh, uh, it's like the data is fairly spread out. So we might need to like uh, uh, log transform the y-axis. Um, I'm not sure that's actually possible here. Um, so we would, uh, we might need to go back to R and like pre-compute the log transform mean expression, for example, uh, if you want to show that uh, with this app. So um, um, a lot of times maybe, you know, maybe we don't actually need this information uh, to see a, a row data plot. So we'll, 
we can take it out. So, the, uh, but before I take it out, let me let me explain the rest of the panels. Um, um, so there's a sample assay plot. Um, so this is where we're looking um, at a very specific uh, sample. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at the sample called um, R13896. And so here we're looking at the expression of all the genes across that one sample, uh, um, which might be sometimes of interest if you think that there's something weird with that sample. So let's say we had a PCA plot um, and then one sample looks weird, we could like look at the expression profile across all the genes for that sample. Um, um, uh, there's a column data table one, which is the information that we have about our samples. So like we had all like a lot of the speakeasy variables. I'm gonna go all the way to the right where we have, um, uh, uh, yeah, like brain region, primary diagnosis, sex, information like that. And so um, let's say you know the brain number for a sample, you can sort it that way. Find the specific sample and this middle panel sample assay plot, you could uh, make the data parameter here to have as input the uh, column data table one, such that if I now click on a sample on the right table, it will update the sample acid plot, right? So um, here it depends whether you think this, you know, this type of visualization is informative, informative for you or not. It might not be. In some cases, it might be. Um, there's a seventh panel here called complex speed map one, and so this one here, I'm gonna click on data parameters, and uh, I'm gonna click on edit feature names. And so, oh, uh, I forgot here that we're using gen code IDs. I don't actually know the gen code IDs for some genes that I wanna see. So let me click and apply. Let me find some genes over here. So uh, MOBP. Um, um, let me copy that uh, into new. Uh, I'm going to save some of the genes. So that's MOVP. Let's look at SNAP25. Uh, there's two of them, SNAP25 and SNAP25 anti-sense one. So I want the first one. Let me copy that gene name. Um, and let's look at MB, MBP. Um, uh, okay, that's the first one. Uh, so let's copy that over here. Um, so to make it more useful, maybe like we could change the row names of our summarized experiment object to use the symbols instead of the gen code IDs. Uh, we could do that externally. Um, so let me go back to the complex heat map. I'm gonna under data parameters, edit, edit feature names. And so I'm gonna paste there my three genes that I have, um, click apply. Um, and so, oh, this is a little bit hard. Um, um, Cause I need to remember the names, but uh, the one that ends, um, um, right. The one that ends in dot seventeen that was um, MOBP. The second one was SNAP twenty five. The third one is MBP. Uh, but here, like this, is just made a, a little heat map um, uh, that shows um, the three genes and their expression across the forty samples that we have. Let me add some visual parameters. Um, so I'm going to annotate the columns by whether they're um, their brain region and also the primary diagnosis. And let's add sex. Um, and let's add some row information. So let me add actually here the gene symbol. 
um, um, oh, that seems to have crashed the app. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, it did crash. I guess I don't know what error there was there, but um, um, I won't do that the next time. <laughs> Um, can you can you save the plots, all these nice plots? Is there a function to save them? Um, let's see. I need a lab to load first. Um, There's a little bit of time to load because we have a lot of genes, right? So maybe um, like something we could do is to filter out the lowly expressed genes, for example, so it has less information to plot. Um, Uh, I just saw that in the top right corner, there's a little download button and you can download plots as PDFs and I think you can also extract the R code too. So yeah. 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 Thanks, Luis. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So here just out of the brain region and primary diagnosis. Um, so you can see a little bit how the, the samples cluster type of thing. Um, um, so going to show a little bit of Giovanna's question here, on the top right, there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, so first of all, there is this eye information, which will tell you a little bit about I see or this session. There's a question mark, and they have a tour that is designed for their example data. Um, so it doesn't like, it's not always relevant because if someone else made a customized version of this, I see app, the tour doesn't really apply to it. But then there's this like little download button here. And so <clears throat> you can download a couple of things. You can download a panel output. So that's where you can download, um, um, let's say I want to download the complex key map. So I'll just select that, click download. Um, and I see that it's saving me an HTML file, uh, although there was a, a server problem. I don't know what happened there. Um, um, is that where you saw the download PDF, Luis? Uh, it downloaded a zip with a PDF in it for me. Um, when you selected everything? Uh, I just selected the, the first plot, just the feature assay one. Um, uh, let me try that. Oh, cool. That does a load a zip file. Um, and yeah, I do see the PDF there. Um, cool. Thanks, Luis. No problem. Um, so, I mean, because my app crashed and all my visual parameters got destroyed um, but let me let me add them again quickly so I'll add here the data parameter and I want data from the row data table one um, visual parameters that I want them to color them by brain uh, region and shape by um, by primary diagnosis um, and so um, we saw that maybe we didn't like this row data plot one, or maybe sample acid plot one. Maybe we don't need those, uh, so we can remove them actually. And one way that you, you can re the way you can remove them is that there's this little icon here on the top right that shows like a, a square with two nested squares inside. Um, so let me click on that. And so there's something here here called organized panels. So let's organize them. 
And at the top, you're going to see like a little text box type of thing that shows the names of the different panels that we have. Uh, so let me uh, click on the X for row data plot one um, sample assay plot one. Um, let's say that uh, um, let's say that I actually maybe don't need the column data table one. Um, um, and maybe you want to have a complex heat map before the the feature assay plot, so I'll move it here. I'll drag it and drop it um, um, before column data plot one. Um, and so now we have only four el uh, elements. Um, the maximum width that they can have is 12. So if I have a uh, four elements, I could make it into a two by two square. So I'm gonna make the width six for all of them. Um, what, six? Uh, maybe actually one more vertical space for them. So I'm going to increase the height from 500 pixels to 600 pixels for all of them. Um, so I'm doing quite a bit of changes. Um, and now that I'm happy, I'm going to go to the top and click Apply Settings. Um, so now, I have more space. I have uh, my two by two um, uh, set of plots. Let me change also some of the visual parameters for our plot over here. Color by uh, range region, uh, shape by um, primary diagnosis. All right. So let's say I'm pretty happy with this um, layout. Um, so one feature that is highly use, uh, uh, of um, uh, great use is to click on the download button on the top right. And I'm going to click here on extract the R code. And so this shows me um, uh, all the R code. Wait, I didn't actually want that. That shows me all the R code for making the app from scratch. What I wanted was um, display panel settings, sorry, under download, display panel settings. Um, yes, this is what I like. So I'm gonna select all of this code. Let me zoom out. Um, Control A to, well, yeah, let me select all of it. Um, right click, copy it. Um, and so, I could go back to my R script that we had. Um, and I'm going to paste it there. So initial IC setup. So this is a lot of code. Um, um, and so what's happening here? Here we're saying, like, OK, we're creating a list. We want to have a row data table. Um, we would then want to have a feature assay plot. This feature assay plot is going to get the data for the y-axis from the row data table one, which we defined previously. Um, um, uh, and we're actually going to color and shape um, uh, um, uh, the shape column data is going to be by the primary diagnosis. The color color the color by column data will be brain region, and so this is saving in our code all our selections that we made. Like it's also selecting the the four genes that I had, right? Uh, sorry, the three genes that I wanted to show, um, uh, and all the options that we wanted. So let me go back to the browser here. Uh, if I close down the Shiny app, right, so if I close it down um, and go back to my R code, uh, not that code, the other code, uh, let me run all, all of this initial setup, setup here, um, ton of code, and I'll run again my app using um, the code that I liked. Run app 
with setup we want to share. Um, and so I see the, the function I see, the second argument is an initial argument. And so that is, it expects this type of list that, has, that explains all the different pieces that we want. Uh, so we actually created an initial list and that's how we called it. So let me run this again uh, with um, um, let me open it in the browser. Um, and so, you can, well, um, I'm zoomed out, but let me zoom in again. Um, um, and so now you get like the two by two setup that we pre-specified with like the genes, the visualization options that we wanted. Um, and so as a user though, if you share this to a user, they can still go to organize panels. Um, they can add a panel here, right? They could add, let's say they do want to have that um, um, uh, column data table that we took out. They could add it back. Um, and then I click apply settings and, uh, and add it back. Um, so, so as a user, if you encounter an IC app, you can you know, share it and, uh, and configure this stuff um, to your liking, even if, if someone is hosting the app for you. Um, 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 and so I went through all of this because, um, I mean, first of all, you can, you know, you can make nice plots. Um, um, sometimes the, 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 some of the settings that we provide don't fully work. So here we can see that the shape uh, was not added. The primary diagnosis shape did not actually get recorded. So that might be a little bug that needs to be fixed on IC. Um, um, but most of it actually worked here. Um, um, and so uh, I went through all of this because yes, you can you know, make your IC app for your data but also because uh, we just um, made five of them for the new um, project by Matt, um, that Matt Tran and, um, and Kristen Maynard led. And so uh, on the GitHub repository for uh, this project, the next uh, pilot and that we, we just made public and that we just posted a preprint, um, um, two days ago, we have a section here called Explore the Data Interactively. And so there's actually five links here to uh, currently live uh, IC apps. And these are for our single cell data. So let me open, for example, the Mingala one on a new tab. And so this will be a bit more complex than the ones I just showed because um, uh, they're like using single cell data. Um, uh, where we have a ton of cells uh, instead of just 40, uh, instead of just 40 uh, regions, 40 samples. So we have a, like our cloud of points here, it has a lot of points. Uh, you'll notice that we have a new type of plot on the top left, which is the reduced dimension plot, which in this case is showing PC1 versus PC2. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this a bit better. Um, I was going to have to remake all the plots because I zoomed in. Um, all right. So here, for example, on um, data parameters, um, this is showing the PC plots. But let, I could also select TSNE to look at the TSNE uh, reduced dimension plots for these single cell data. Um, we can see here a couple of genes, SNAP25, MVP, PCP4, et cetera. We have a plot here where we're looking at the expression of a given gene, but where we now um, have one little um, uh, box plot or like, or piece form type of thing per each of the cell types that Matt defined. Um, and so uh, all of this was made with like code that is public. And so you can see the way that I made this was like, I made one of these IC apps we configured the settings that we wanted to share with people. 
I downloaded those settings. Um, and so because I had to do it five times and I wrote a little bit more code. Um, and so on the Google Doc, I included the link to, to that code. Um, in case you're interested here, there's a, a file called clean functions. And it has some of the functions for making that, um, for reducing the data that we have, and then for creating the actual app, um, and then deploying it to the web. Uh, so there's a couple of code. There's quite a bit of things here. Um, if you're interested in learning more about IC and the way we made those apps, but um, as researchers, though, you might, you know, if, even without the code, you might just be interested in like exploring this data that we have for these uh, fibrin regions uh, because I mean it's brand new, right? It was just pre posted as a preprint two days ago. Um, and you might, you know, I don't know, let's say you're interested in like exploring the expression of MLBP among the cell -like types that we have uh, in the amygdala brain region, right? So this is how you can you know, check that uh, quite quickly without having to write any code, without having to download any data yourself or anything like that. Cool. So I hope you're excited about CIC. Um, um, and so we actually like you know, making uh, some small websites for people to use so they can actually see the data that we have provided, right? Um, um, uh, uh, a lot of people just share the, their process uh, results, but then there's no visualization there, uh, option there for actually like, you know, quickly looking at the data. So you have to do some work yourself. You have to prepare the data for example, to use IC. And so we, we did all that work um, already. Um, um, and uh, sometimes um, sometimes you might have questions that are easily answered by just exploring the data. Cool, so um, that's it for today. Let me stop recording.